Wow. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Wow. <laughs> Where am I? I could not mess up like a girl. <laughs> I don't even wanna. Please, I'm so upset. What do you mean? What do you even mean? <laughs> ah, my God. I'm not sure why I'm getting like the um interruption noises. Uh, they are awesome. some. That's weird. I don't know if it's coming from somebody else's mind or it's from mine. I don't know. If you're not muted, just mute. Oh my goodness! I just spent like a whole ten minutes. Speaking to, okay, okay. <laughs> wow. All right. Um, let's get into it. Let's get into it. This is not a drill, Bagiti. This is the new moon in Aries. Okay. This is exciting stuff. We're not playing here. We're talking. A good five planets all going to be in area at the same time. It is movement. It is um, get up and go. It's all of those things that we know about Aries. But I just wanted to start with a quick recap of what's been going on and just kind of center you and situate you with what means what at this moment in time. Um, Bagheti, I am going to stop my video at this time, um, simply because um, a video is great when I am teaching or when we are in a closed session, but um, Leo, anytime that I have to channel, Leo, I go for my course. Welcome to Sangoma Society. I am Ohani Wagamakwa to my parents. And this is Sangoma Society. Here we demystify the ancestral. We are here in our capacity doing these moon readings in our capacity as we have to work with the understanding of the movements of the astral bodies interpreting those for the best way forward um, on this rock that we call home because these astral bodies all different ways um, so for that reason we do these meetings so that you can plan for your future with the understanding of what is influencing you in mind okay so I would like to just start with what's been going on, what might be feeling like what to you at this time. So um, some people may not be aware that we have no retrograde plans right now, okay? We have been talking about this stretch of time um February, March into April, honest. Um since about October last year, 
because that's when it would have started to pop up onto our radar. Um, my son was in Libra because this window of opportunity is going to close when the moon is in Libra because of the reflections, how things, how things um, always balance out that way in the sky. But basically what we're looking at right now is there are no planets in retrograde whatsoever. So what you are perceiving at this moment, it is what it is, okay? In terms of heaviness, tiredness, I know that it's been really heavy times, like majorly heavy times. We just need to remember that right now, uh, Jupiter is still conjunct Chiron. Well, they conjuncted uh, this past Saturday, but they are still both domiciled in Aries and they're going to stay like that for some time. Um, and the thing is Jupiter in Aries, Chiron in Aries, what Chiron is, is the wounded healer. What Jupiter is, is the magnifier. So where you may have been hiding your stories, <laughs> it is kind of magnified right now. Where you've got your the, the stories, the mistruths that you tell yourself and all of those things, those things are surfacing in ways that um, <laughs> may not be uh, <laughs> altogether comfortable. Okay, and basically, let me tell you, um, very few people are, are feeling very comfortable right now. So this is not the time to be pressing on anything. Listen, everybody's trying their best. Fronts need to be faced. Mercury is very much direct, but is actually combust, which means in its rotation around the sun, you know, it's not like a perfect circle around the sun. Sometimes it's nearer the sun than it is further. So right now, Mercury is as close as Mercury gets to the sun. And it is already in what we say a detrimental position where it is in Pisces, because Pisces is not the most direct communicator, right? So now it's like under pressure and also just really working in a place of unfamiliar depth um, and not altogether surface level clarity. So when people are communicating at this time, it's taking a little bit more effort. If anybody is delayed in their communications with you or you're struggling like the kind of struggle that we had um, at the beginning of our session, just understand that this is not something that is working against you, maybe giving you pause for reconsideration, um, but not necessarily saying, listen, things are not in your favor. It's not like drop everything, try again. It's not like pause. It's like, okay, um, what do I really want? How do I get clarity out of this? And how do I communicate better? Which uh, brings us to that dream space and what has been going on. Remember, we started with a full moon in Virgo a week ago. That was like what was going on. Um, that influence of Virgo wanting clarity and things, that's just kind of carried on as the moon continues its course through the zodiac. So going into Libra, now you start weighing up the plans that you, you think you might put into place. Scorpio, you start asking yourself questions. Sagittarius, you start getting some really amazing insights to those questions. And now we're in Capricorn. And again, you know, it's going to like, how do we do this practically? How do we? And then when it goes into Aquarius, it's going to be like some more bright ideas. And when it goes into Pisces, you might have like some really incredible dreams leading up just before the new moon. And when we see that new moon next week, Tuesday, it is quite likely that when the moon now enters Pisces, uh, enters Aries moving out of Pisces, 
and into Aries, that clarity, that vuma, that fire, you know, under your, your, the seat of your pants is going to be ignited and you are going to want to take action. So most of the dream space right now when you're sleeping is under the influence of that full moon in Virgo, which is still asking really, really for a practical way forward. Like, <laughs> This is the season of taking action, okay? And that taking action will continue. Right now, we have been saying since the full moon, um, the action that you need to take is figuring out the action that you're going to take. If there is mystic work that you're doing right now, it is getting the things off your plate that you've been new that you needed to do. So like that cleansing that you haven't done since 2020 and you knew, oh, um, that conversation that you needed to have uh, and you knew that since, since, and you've been new. Like for your sake, beloved, do it now plan your action now because this is a window of opportunity it is not going to last forever it's not that you won't be able to take action if things don't come together right now that you won't be able to take action later it's just that it's not going to be as opportune because you're looking at the next moon, sorry about that. The next full moon that we're going to have is going to be the African harvest moon. Then, you know, after that, we're going to have Jupiter moving um, into Taurus. It's going to do some really amazing things there. And then we're going to have eclipse season. <laughs> and, you know, you don't really want to be doing too much until that's over. Um, and then, you know, that's going to be a bit of a delay. And But I mean, absolutely, if it's things that have only been set into motion this year, fine. You know, um, I wouldn't feel too much urgency about it. We're still going to have the solstice, the media solstice, where we're going to have an opportunity to review and to redetermine ourselves but like right now what we want to get out of the way is they have been standing there because because whew, going forward going forward <laughs> we're gonna have the official astrological new moon Excuse me, I need to close that door. These cars are so loud, sorry. So on Monday, the 20th of March, we're going to have the equinox, okay? That means astrological new year. That means harvest. That means Thanksgivings. That means Okanja Nanje M you know, counting our blessings. You know, um and understanding that now we really begin the new new. This is going to be the new moon in Aries the following day on the 21st of March okay and then because this March this month of March 2023 it is not just any month please oh my goodness I've been so excited for this for so long but okay so the sequence of events 
in their auspiciousness escalates in such a manner that <laughs> on the 22nd of March, Pluto enters Aquarius. Ah, oh, my goodness. This is an event that is happening for the first time in actual centuries. We are looking at um, something that has been precursor since 2012. We're looking at um, cycles that are, you know, going to be beginning a new age altogether. But again, this is like a window of opportunity because Pluto in Aquarius is not going to be lasting very long in this year. So why it's so important that you know the action that you're going to take right now is because this is the test run. This is that foundation year. Remember in the like um, year reading, we spoke about how 2023 is a foundation year. So when we're talking foundation year, we're talking this opportunity to look at, hmm, what could the next 25, 30 years look like for me? Do you know, um, look like for us as a society, but it's not necessarily like we're just going boom, straight into it. Nope. Pluto's just going to dip in there for a quarter, you know, give us an overview and, and, and then retrograde back into, into Capricorn and retrograde review. You get me? So when that uh, retrograde begins and we get into the solstice, then again, we're going to now have this opportunity for review. Okay, I thought this is how it was going to go forward, but maybe this is how, in fact, I need to go forward. You know, this is the importance of working with the rhythm of the seasons. And it is how we make our own luck when we know that, oh, these are the influences that are out there right now. So it's like, if you know that, oh, you've been having weird dreams, but then you also know that maybe if Neptune is moving in a weird way at that time, et cetera, et cetera, that may be influencing. But if it's like it is right now and everything is direct and you know that, oh, I've been having weird dreams because I need to be aware something related to these dreams is actually going on these are not those kind of times then you get this opportunity to deal with and interact with your spiritual life in a really practical and empowered way and that's really what this moment in time is calling for practical clear empowered action because sometimes the medicine that you need more than anything else is the action that you take. But taking action without clarity of intent is such a, a waste, such an unfortunate way of going about things. So we're always encouraging you to keep an eye on your patterns, the patterns of your dreams, the patterns of your own inner cycle, journaling how you feel with every new moon, observing your, your moods and your contributing factors with every full moon, you know, so that you know that, oh, this affects me in this way, that affects me in that way. So maybe I should schedule my life in such a manner as to accommodate these existing cycles within myself so that you're working within your own rhythm. And then also so that if you do find yourself in situations where there are, you know, mystic elements in play um, working for or against you, that you can then revert back, refer back to what you have on paper. If you've ever consulted with us, you will know that we always say, take notes, 
and we make sure that we send a few notes um, that we feel that you should just be aware of after your session, but take notes so that when something is said to be caused by a certain contributing factor, when you have dealt with that contributing factor, then you should be able to isolate a result in that something that was allegedly caused by that contributing factor. That is the only way that you're going to build a relationship with your ancestors that empowers you, that you don't feel so afraid of. Because listen, <laughs> Okay. So what more when you're sitting in a situation where you don't even know if this is a road that you must walk or you know and you're still afraid or you're completely, you know, um, outside of the frame of this way of working, but you have... Um, your own soul's mission and you want to have a relationship with your ancestors, but these things are just pure mysticism to you. How do you demystify that for yourself in practical ways, right? This is the thing. We have to put practical things into place. And that is really what this moment is calling for. And for us here, we love a practical interrogatable process and for that reason this Saturday the 18th of March we will be hosting the Making a Miracle Masterclass in person we're only half full at the moment but we also have remote access where we will have a lot more capacity. I will not be on my own. I will have Umakos um, Oh my goodness. I will have Umakos Kanyas and Umakos on hand to support and hold space throughout um, the session. And for those who are accessing the session remotely, you will also get access to the existing um, recording of the Making a Miracle Masterclass, just in case anything untoward interrupts our process, like load shedding goes off schedule or anything that we have not planned for drops our call for whatever reason, no matter what happens, this Saturday, the 18th of March, you will have access to the work, the workbook, and the process for interrogating the method of your miracle to make this foundation year into something that is practical, as well as restful, because the framework that we use is the restful reset workbook. And the reflection that we uh, frame this through is the method of your miracle. And we're looking for how do we recreate that into the rhythm of the life that we're living now. So this is what we mean when we say practical application, by it's practical application and considerate application as well, because we know how different cycles of the moon affect us differently. But in order for us to be able to remain consistent, we need to be able to verify that which time of year does what to me. Do you know, uh, typically in June, what happens with me? Typically in January, what happens with me? So that when you're planning, right, you have an idea of your rhythm and also those things that are gonna knock you offside how do you make space for what you actually need? Guys, we've just come through a pandemic. 
<laughs> just come through. Listen, <laughs> don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. Saturn entered Aquarius in March 2020 and just moved out of Aquarius a week ago into Pisces in March 2023. As much as that much might mark um, a certain frame of history, it's not necessarily. I am not an epidemiologist, okay? So don't quote me on that, but why I was referring to the pandemic was because we've lost so many people. So many of us have lost so many people. Even when it wasn't friends, maybe it was family. Where it wasn't family, maybe it was friends. And that there may be those moments that those months, those weeks, those days that may knock you. Leo. E, how are you planning with that reality in mind? Leo, you don't have to plan for the next 10 years, child. You may be healed of your grief in the next 10 years. Goody for you. But right now, in the reality of the next two to three years where you're just trying to get yourself together, where you, where you still maybe feel like catching yourself as you wanting to call that person and tell them, whatever news you may or may not have at any given time, right? How are you considering those moments in your planning? Because we're human, we're human. Congo, we're human. So we have to consider these things, mitigate, make space, hold space for ourselves, consider ourselves when we do our planning. These are the things that are considered in the planning and review process that is the framework of the RESTful Reset Workbook, which is on sale now. So, what we're trying to do, Bagetti, um, with what we make available to you at any given time is to give you the tools that fit the space and time that we find ourselves in. Right now, we'd just like to encourage you. Get yourself in order. So because hey, hey, in Kanta Zako Zinga Valwa Yito Zatala Ozazio right now. Please, not in this window of opportunity. Come now. Make a plan. Get it together. Okay. But like face the front that you need to face and take those chances. This is that window of opportunity that is going to be stretching all the way up until the 20th of April. That's another new moon. And very shortly thereafter, we have Mercury retrograde, blah, 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 eclipse season, et cetera, et cetera. It gets hectic. But, you know, in this window of opportunity, do not sit we said this year, silver linings, like, let us make our own luck. It doesn't have to be perfect. Submit what you've got, okay? Maybe just that submission is enough for you to get the conversation with the recipient rolling, enough for them to tell you what to fix so that you know that your foot is in the door. How if it's not in the door enough for the sign off or the approval or the acceptance or the promotion to happen this year? Remember, 2023 is a foundation year. What if it's just going to open a window to how you could move if only you were willing to take that chance on 
you. There are no excuses right now. No retrograde planets. Whatever front is being forced into your face to face. We spoke about this when we did the full moon reading. Listen, when we said that um, Jupiter was going to conjunct Chiron, we said it's going to hurt. We said <laughs> you're going to feel a little overwhelmed if you've been running. We said that the call might just come from inside the house. And if it's like that now, beloved, cry the tears you have to cry and then wipe them clean. Wipe them clean because sometimes the medicine that you need is the action that you have to take. Don't sit and not take action. If you think, oh, I think something's blocking me because I'm really trying and I'm not getting it together. <sighs> bite the bullet, book the reading with the reader that you trust. Find out. If you know the thing that you need to do, take initiative, ask, what's the next step? And no, be just sitting, asking yourself, asking your friends, asking your candles, asking your parents who don't know. Ask people who know. If the next step is for your, your post-grad, ask somebody. Uh, 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 tweet about it google if the question eating umsamo suguma kutala wait guys please mm -mm, mm -mm. what we're not going to do is pretend like we don't see when the writing is on the wall and yes yes we're all scared please <laughs> Please, we are all scared. But your dreams are going to cost you your courage. It's going to take your courage right now. And the way in which to gather that courage is to consider for a moment the love that could come into this world through the action that you take. You're a manifestation of the creator's love in this world. You are a living, breathing manifestation of God's love for you. Your very existence is that. If you have nothing else that gives you hope, hold on to that. You're the descendant of love made real. That is the skin of your skin, the blood of your bones, your ancestors. Take that, take courage, and take action. See you at the brunch on Saturday. Makos. <laughs>